What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the spectacular BMW 8 Series Convertible. Thanks to my friends at BMW Romania, today I'm driving the M850i variant of the 8 Series Cabrio and just look at it, it's simply stunning. And in today's video I want to find out if this car is a proper BMW flagship or if it's just a rebadged 6 Series like some people seem to suggest. This is the M850i, an M performance variant of this car that sits between the regular 8 series, if you can call them regular, and the upcoming BMW M8. This particular car is finished in the Dravit grey metallic color and all of its details are darkened thanks to the optional individual shadow line pack which this car is equipped with. It basically makes the front grille, the side vents, and the tailpipes in gloss black, which I think is a very cool touch for this car. The new A series has a very unique front grille as well. It's upside down basically, unlike any other BMW in the current lineup. And even though they're quite big, I think they fit this particular car very well. Because this is an M Performance car, it has the M Sport front bumper that has bigger air vents and an overall more aggressive design. This car also features BMW's optional laser headlights and the giveaway is this blue tint in the housing over there and I think that's kind of it for the front. Now let's move on to my favorite angle of this car, the side one. Look at this, I just love how this car looks like from this angle. The long bonnet up front and just look at this 20 inch Y spoke gloss black wheels. The wheels also hide these massive M Sport brakes, which are very effective. They stop the car really well in its tracks. And that's kind of it for the side as well. Just look at these wheels. Let's move on to the back. Now take a look at this stance. Spot on, in my opinion. You have 275 section tires at the back, which obviously help with the look of the car just look at this how they stick out just a little and i don't know about you but i absolutely love the aggressive line the back end has look at these vents over here they are a bit fake and down here you have the diffuser with these huge tailpipes at the back which unfortunately are fake they hide the real ones inside boot space is limited of course this is a convertible when it's like this with the top down, the entire roof is basically stored in the boot of the car. But let's jump inside so I can show you the interior in more detail. This is the interior of the new 8 series convertible. And as you would expect, there's no roof, obviously. So let's begin with the upholstery. This is an individual upholstery it's called merino and it also features the extended leather package which means you get real leather on the dashboard and on the doors as well i haven't been able to find a bad quality material on the inside of this car except for maybe this bit here that has some regular plastics but otherwise you have aluminum over there, individual leather, gloss black plastic, which kind of attracts too much fingerprints, but there you go. That's the trade-off. This is the M steering wheel because this car is an M performance variant. Up front, we have BMW's new digital instrument cluster. 
Over here on the left, you have the speedometer. In the middle, there's the map. You can't really change that. And on the right, inside the ref counter, that's the place where you can show various information from the onboard computer of the car. This is the average fuel consumption, total mileage, a G-force meter for some reason, and sport dials. But that's kind of it. The new 8 Series doesn't have anything different on the instrument cluster compared to the 3 Series or X5 that I drove last year. This car also has the Bowers & Wilkins sound system and it's really good, let me tell you. Moving on, same as the 3 Series X5 Z4, the infotainment system, you guys already know it. This is the home page, it's basically like an Android device. You can add big widgets, small widgets, there you go. And down here we have the shifter, this knob that you control the infotainment system with, and the volume control in crafted clarity crystals. And I think this is really cool, you can see the 8 series logo inside of that. But other than that, this is all standard stuff you can find on other BMWs. What you can't find in other BMWs are these three buttons over here. With this one, obviously, you can retract and put back the roof of the car. And these two, they're basically neck warmers. You press this button and from over here, the seat starts blowing warm air onto your neck, which is really useful, especially on a day like today. And beside all of that, this car also has a package that not only hits the front seats, right? But it also hits the armrest on the door and this armrest over here, which again is very useful for a convertible, especially in weather like this. I'm not going to jump in the back seat because look at that. I'm never going to fit in there. So it's kind of pointless. Yeah, but that's kind of it for the interior. Let's put the roof up and see how this car drives. things first let me give you some stats this is the m850i variant it has a 4.4 twin turbo v8 engine under the bonnet capable of producing 530 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque it can take this quite massive car it weighs a smidge above two tons from north to 100 kilometers per hour in just 3.9 seconds. Power goes to all four wheels via BMW's all-wheel drive system called X-Drive. And the only gearbox you can have in this car is the already famous, at least in BMW's, ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. The car also features integral active steering, adaptive M suspension, an M differential at the back and M sport brakes all around. Bear with me, I'm going to explain everything. But before we dive in any further, you have to know that this 8 series is set up in a quite sporty manner. There's no air suspension available for this car to order, and that means you don't get the magic air carpet ride that you get in the 7 series, for example. The suspension is on the firm side and the steering is also quite sporty. It has a lot of weight added to it. But now let's begin with the engine. It's spectacular. It's massively powerful and there's really no point in the rev range where it can't pump out power and just listen to the way it sounds if we drop a few gears. Oof. 
and to my ears at least, the fake sound that's being pumped through the speakers of BMWs has changed in this new 8 series. In the M550i and M5 I drove last year, it was quite obvious that fake sound is being pumped through the speakers. But in this car, not so much. It is spectacular, this engine. Insane. And because this is a soft top convertible, it's not as well insulated from the outside as a coupe, for example. It makes that engine and that exhaust more exciting than, and I'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying this, than the ones in the M5 I drove last year. It really does. engine inside the cabin and a lot more of the crackles and pops of the exhaust as well. Even though the suspension is on the firm side, on longer journeys on motorways it remains surprisingly comfortable even with these 20 inch wheels mounted to the car. You're gonna feel potholes you hit in the road, the car doesn't just glide over them like a 7 series would, but the suspension is not harsh, it's refined in the way it handles rough asphalt roads. But even so, there's quite a lot of weight transfer going on when you accelerate, brake, or when you go into a corner at speeds you shouldn't be going into a corner at. Let me just put it that way. As I've mentioned earlier, this car has integral active steering, which basically lets all four wheels of the car turn. The back wheels will turn opposite to the front ones at speeds up to 72 km per hour to make the car easier to maneuver and above that figure, 72 km per hour, the back wheels turn in the same direction as the front ones to provide more high speed stability. However, in Sport and Sport Plus mode, the threshold increases to 88 km per hour. And that makes this car feel like a 3 series around bends. It's so agile, it's so quick to turn in, that you'll instantly forget that you're driving a 5 meter long 2 door coupe. Turn in requires less steering lock, the car reacts quickly to your inputs and you can precisely place it on the road. And now we're at the point where I'm supposed to find a couple of things that I don't really like about the car I'm driving. Well, I have to be honest that I'm quite struggling to find issues with this car because I absolutely adore it. So I'm gonna have to resort to nitpicking for this one. So, first there's some questionable plastics below the infotainment system that just stick out when put together with the other high quality materials on the inside. Then there's the amount of fake vents on the exterior. They look great design-wise, but I wish they had another purpose other than aesthetics. And the last thing on my list is the fact that this car doesn't have any device that pushes the seat belts more to the front when you get inside the car. Because it's quite a reach to get to the seat belt and yeah, it's a 150,000 euro car and I would expect such things from such a car. So, to sum things up, I think this car is 100% worthy of being called the BMW flagship. It's bigger, more luxurious and unique enough to justify that. So yes, my friends, this is a fantastic car equipped with a fantastic engine. And I would argue that if you want to buy an 8 series, just go right ahead and buy the convertible. You don't lose any refinement, the car is pretty quiet anyway, and you don't even lose practicality because these back seats are pretty useless in the coupe as well. But on the other hand, you gain so much more. More engine noise, more wind in your hair if you have any, and a proper long-distance GT Cruiser experience. 
thank you to my friends at BMW Romania for loaning me this car for the weekend. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And make sure you're subscribed for plenty more videos to come. And until next time, take good care of yourselves and I'll see you around.